In the mangrove forests of the Sundarbans in Bangladesh, tigers and humans have coexisted for years. But in the last few years, the balance has tipped. Tiger attacks have increased dramatically. In this episode of Get Real, we travel to the Sundarbans to find out what it's like living in the danger zone. Those were 40-year-old Ziad Ali's last words to his wife. That afternoon, six years ago, the fisherman went out in his boat and never returned. After Ziad was killed in a tiger attack, the blame fell on his wife. She was labeled a tiger widow and chased out of her village. In parts of the Sundarbans in Bangladesh, superstition runs deep. It dictates what women can and cannot do when their husbands go into the forest to hunt. Jamun dubur bala zal pula iti parbe na, mata shiti katte parbe na, por purushesha to kato bolte parbe na, jagla kotte parbe na, tar pore gaye shaban dite parbe na, kapur parsad diye katte par kaste parbe na. Eigulo kordle dhore neho hai, jetar shami shundar bone bipade porbe, ta ke shami kha ke ishbe dakhabe. More than 4,000 women in the Sundarbans share Monzilla's plight. Tiger attacks are common here. The Sundarbans is the world's largest mangrove forest. 10,000 square kilometers stretching across Bangladesh and India. This is home to the fearsome Royal Bengal Tiger. It is also home to an estimated one million people many of whom live off forest resources. Some fish by the banks of the mangroves. Others go deep into the forest to gather wood and honey. Here, life is short, hard, and at the mercy of Mother Nature. When the twice yearly monsoon strikes, the weather can change in an instant. On the 25th of May 2009, Cyclone Isla slammed into the southwest coast of Bangladesh. It was one of the worst tropical storms to hit the Sundarbans in recent memory. Thousands of kilometers of embankments were destroyed, roads were swept away, and whole villages were submerged. 300 people died, 
and half a million left homeless. It was during this time that tiger attacks shot up dramatically. According to the Forest Department, tigers killed 120 men in 2009 alone. That's one death every three days. The real figure is likely to be much higher because these numbers only count registered forestry workers. Osman Goni and his team are heading to the village of Golakali. A tiger has been sighted nearby. Goni is the leader of the village tiger team, which was formed to protect villagers at the height of tiger attacks in 2010. In these parts, Osman Goni is a hero. They call him Tiger Goni. He says he has fended off over a hundred tigers, each time escaping unharmed. accident <laughs> The tactic seems to have worked. The village is safe for now. But there was a time when tigers were entering villages as much as twice a day. What led to the increase in attacks? Bangladesh lies in the path of massive cyclones that form in the Bay of Bengal and hit the country every year. In 2009, Cyclone Isla tore through the delta and submerged villages in a matter of hours. Older locals used to say that a serious cyclone strikes once every hundred years. Not anymore. Cyclones are now more frequent, more severe, First, Siddha in 2007, then Isla two years later. Getriel is heading to Gabora, a village in the west of the Sundarbans. Like many villages in the delta, Gabora is virtually inaccessible. We leave our van in Munchiganj, the furthest point by car before you hit the Sundarbans. Here, there's no other way to travel but by boat and bike, and the journey takes us two hours. Gabora was badly damaged by Cyclone Isla. Until today, it has not fully recovered. These used to be paddy fields and shrimp farms until Cyclone Isla destroyed the embankments over there. So seawater was able to flood in and it made the water too salty for cultivation. Now we're now here in June and before the cyclone you'll be able to see miles and miles of green. But now all that is left is barren land. With their farmlands destroyed, some villagers started rearing crabs in the salty water. Many more went deeper into the forest in search of food. 
tigers were also getting desperate. The cyclone had uprooted large chunks of their habitat, cutting off precious food supply and forcing them to move closer to the villages. Man and tiger were now set on a collision course. मुख <laughs> The guest house we are staying in is just a few minutes away from the Sundarbans forest. Now, electricity is pretty much a luxury here, so nights are spent in darkness. Now, locals tell me that at some nights they can hear the tigers roar. They're quite used to it now. But I can't imagine anything more terrifying. As dawn breaks, Alorani prepares a simple offering to Bon Bibi, goddess of the Sundarbans. Her husband, Rabindra, is heading out to fish. With Bon Bibi's blessing, he will return safely. At the nearby market, the abundance of fish belies the deadly risks that men like Rabindra take to harvest them. As he approaches the waterway that will take him deeper into the forest, Rabindra makes a quick stop at a shrine for Bon Bibi. It's June, and we're in the middle of the summer monsoon. It's still safe for fishermen like Rabindra to be out. The months to avoid, he says, are September and October, when mating season starts. After a few hours in the forest, Rabindra heads home. He's caught enough to sell in the market. Back home. Alorani can breathe a little easier. Her husband will not be taken from her. Not today. Once again, the mother goddess, Bon Bibi, has proven her power. There are different theories why tiger attacks went up in the aftermath of Cyclone Isla. The impact of increasingly salty water is one possibility. Others say the loss of habitat forced tigers to hunt humans because they were easy prey. But what's of greater concern for conservationists like Rezu Azam is why these attacks suddenly dropped in the past year. In 2010, forestry officials received at least one report a day. These days, 
It's once every few weeks. মানুষের আগে চিতে অনেক সচেতন হইছে কিভাবে বনে গিয়ে সেফ ভাবে কিভাবে কাজ করা যায় এই বিষয়ে তাদের এক্সপেরিয়েন্স আগে চিতে বাড়ছে এই একটা একটা কারণ হতে পারে সংঘাত কমে যাওয়ার তবে বেশিরভাগ অনেকে সাধারণ মানুষ মনে করতেছে যে আসলে বাগের সংখ্যাই কমে গেছে অনেক Tigers are an endangered species. Worldwide, there are fewer than 4000 left in the wild. 500 of them live in the Sundarbans. Increasingly, they are being threatened by humans, poaching, loss of habitat, and revenge killings. যে এলাকাবাসীর প্রত্যেকটা ভাই এবং বন্ধু এবং মা বাবাকে এই সুন্দরবনে অ্যাটাক হয়েছে তো তাদেরকে মনে জাগতে পারে যে বাঘ আসলে মারবো এটা তাদের মনে জাগে মানুষ ছিল ওরে আমার গায়ে হাত দিছে তারপর হাত দিয়ে সরাই দেয় আমি খেতা মুখ দেওয়া ছিল খেতা খেলাই দিয়ে এইভাবে সরাইছি আমার সাজাতে থাকা করি The first thing you notice when you meet Hasmod Ali is his scarf. It hints at the horrific attack 20 years ago when he was just 15. <laughs> The tiger had eaten half of Hasmod's face. We can only imagine what he went through. His profile is flat, there is no nose and no cheek left. Only a gaping hole shielded by a flimsy scarf. Hasmod says he has not gone near the forest ever since. There is a small consolation to this story. Hasmod is now happily married. Still, he struggles to gain acceptance from his village. In fact, he had requested we meet him at this secluded jetty to avoid attention. <laughs> Osman Goni and his team patrol the narrow waterways every day. On the left side of the bank is tiger territory. On the other side, villages with a population of several thousand. It takes a tiger only a few minutes to cross the river. In the aftermath of the cyclone, many tigers entered villages to hunt for food. But some of the older, weaker tigers ended up getting killed by angry mobs. It was a difficult time for wildlife conservationist Rezu Azam. The tigers he worked so hard to protect were now hunting his people. His challenge was to convince villagers that their livelihoods depended on the tiger. বাঘ এমন একটা স্পিস যদি আমরা বাঘকে রক্ষা করতে পারি তো সুন্দরবনটা রক্ষা করা হবে এবং সুন্দরবন রক্ষা যদি হয় তাহলে অন্যান্য ওয়াইল্ড লাইফ যেটা সুন্দরবনে বসবাস করতেছে তারাও রক্ষা হবে তো বাঘের আসলে বিকল্প নাই In 2010 the village tiger response team was formed with volunteers such as Osman Goni 
They work with forestry officials to capture and immobilize stray tigers and relocate them away from the villages. They also enter the forest to rescue victims of tiger attacks. They hope this will appease villagers and stop them from going after the tigers. It's a small step towards conserving the fragile tiger population. এর মতে আমরা তাদের সাথে যে মিটিংটা করি বা স্কুল কলেজ এবং ফরেস্টের অফিস হাট বাজার এটা মিটিং করতে 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 এখন যদি আমি আমরা মনে করি বা এই যে সুন্দর সুন্দরবনের উপকূলীয় মানুষের এটাও বলবে এবং সবাই জানে যে বাঘ যদি সুন্দরবন থেকে এখন চলে আসে নিজেরাই সক্ষম বাঘটাকে না মেরে সুন্দরবনে পাঠিয়ে দেওয়া ইন গাবোরা Conservation is far from Monzilla Khatun's mind. Her husband was killed by a tiger six years ago while out fishing. And despite her own fear of the forest, Monzilla became a fisherman too. It's dangerous work, but it feeds the family. Monzilla Khatun and the people who live on the fringes of the Sundarbans are on the front line of climate change. Their vulnerability was exposed when Cyclone Isla destroyed the embankments that protected their low-lying land from the sea. The salt water made farming impossible and forced the young men in her village to head into the mangroves to fish and search for honey. It is not a fate Monzilla wants for her sons. <laughs> তো বাঘ ডালে বাড়ি ঘর তো সেই পুরো শোনা যায় হ্যাঁ মনে না হুড়ি পারে স্বামীর কত বাঘের ডাক শুনলে পড়ানো পাইন থাকে তাকে ও পড়াশোনা করাছি আল্লাহর কাছে দোয়া করি না আল্লাহর জন্য কা পাদার জন্য না নে যাও আর দেশে পুরি মারে তা ভালো তো জন্য বাদার জন্য না দিন যাই আল্লাহর কাছে দোয়া করি দ্য বয়েজ ডোন্ট হ্যাভ আ চয়েস উইথ এক্সপার্টস প্রেডিক্টিং ওয়ার্সেনিং ক্লাইমেট কন্ডিশনস it may not be long before they pick up the fishing net, just like their father once did. And enter the forests, where the tiger lies in wait.